Back on the campus of USC for the second duel in a triple header on Pac-12 Network's opening day. USC back-to-back -back NCAA champions facing their crosstown rival, third-ranked UCLA. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. I'm Anne-Marie Anderson alongside three-time Olympian Holly McPeak. This is the middle match, if you will, of the triple header today, a rematch of last year's Pac-12 semifinals and finals. And UCLA was the only team to beat USC all last year. And it was exciting at the Pac-12 tournament. But now they get a rematch. It's a lot of new faces, though. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, for USC, they were defending NCAA champions. They had won 62 straight duels before running into UCLA last year. Ended up losing to them 2-3. USC now has graduated a lot of talent. What's new for USC? Everything. I think this is a completely new chapter for Anna Collier and USC. Graduating five seniors who provided leadership, experience, everything. But lots of new, young, talented faces who now have the opportunity to carry on that Trojan tradition, according to Anna Collier. Yep, and they are going to be facing UCLA. UCLA, who just came off a dual win over Pepperdine. And so we're going to start this match as we did the last one with the first flight of action. Courts four, or, or court one and two will be the four and five pairs starting things off. And so the five pairs, Murray and Carey, who you already know from UC, UCLA versus Kaiser and Paletto, but we're gonna turn our action to court number one to start off our action. It's the four pairs, Jenna Belton and Joe Kremer, who were the five pairs, for UCLA, much of last year. For USC. For USC, year. excuse me, for last year, and now have moved to the four pair versus May and Simo. And Belton Kramer, two seniors, very experienced, very steady, great volleyball IQ, and just smooth. And they're going to play Savvy Simo, the experienced beach player, and Mac May, the kind of the upstart, six foot three indoor player, learning to play the beach game. Immediately, May and Simo collide going for the serve. Belton swings, kill. Beautiful hand set by Joe Kremer. Putting up a nice ball for Jenna Belton, and Savvy Simo got a good touch on it, just can't control it. We talked about youth throughout many of these teams while not here for USC. The double senior team, very steady team. There have been times last year that Anna Collier didn't even send a coach to coach them when they were at fives. Well, Joe Kremer, so experienced. I love her game. I saw her in high school, love her footwork. Just she knows the game, she understands, and they both together really complement each other. Anna Collier calls them steady Eddie. Belton at the net, Simo hitting. Her sunglasses are on her visor, sun coming in and out. Great up by Simo. How about that play by Savvy Simo? And then Mac May with the deep poke shot gets it to drop. But, you know, I can't tell if Savvy Simo doesn't want to play with glasses or she forgot to pull him down because Sun's definitely in her face on that side of the net. I know. I had the same thought. You want to yell out, glasses are on your visor. But at the same time, right, she's going into digging in the shade at times. I mean, I don't know. Does it affect you? Well, it was cloudy the first match, and she played with them on her head the whole time, not on her face. So maybe she just lights them up there. A safety blanket. We'll see. Belton serves Simo. Simo crushing. Kramer digs, waits for Belton to get a piece of it, and she does. Simo again, looking for line. Steady. Belton just puts it up. Trusting Kremer can get there. Just patience. USC, these two seniors, patient, waiting for their opportunity to score. And they get it. Ball is set too tight by Mac May, the freshman from Iowa. And USC capitalizes. Yeah, you talked about that earlier, kind of making Mac May set the ball. She doesn't set it indoors. She is the bigger player. Never over. Joe Kremer frustrated with herself. She saw the opening. Her brain was working faster than her arm. Missed opportunity for USC. Kremer sees Mac May in front of her. 
cut. Jill Kramer so good with her hand, hitting that ball wide cross court away from the defender. Good USC lead on the side change, 5-2. Meanwhile, taking a look at court number two in the five pairs, Murray and Carey out to a strong start versus Kaiser and Paletto. Maya Kaiser and Alexandra Paletto trying to earn that five spot for USC. Coach Anna Collier trying out lots of different teams in that spot. Yep, Carey in that 7-2 lead. Three of those are off of her blocks. Kremer's serve hits the net. Savvy Simo. Wide. You know, you, you have to minimize your errors playing against a team like Belton and Kremer. They'll just continue to put the pressure on you. They might not do anything spectacular, but they do everything well. And it puts a lot of pressure on their opponents. How about that dig by Joe Kremer? And a little shot, Simo into the net. Anna Collier has told us over the last five years the way she's recruiting has changed so much because for Anna Collier, she says, I can now, the depth talent, the pool of talent is so deep, I can recruit the kind of player I need. Do I need a big? Do I need a, a, a defensive player? Yeah, uh, the talent pool, like I said, the grassroots is just exploding and there's athletes all over the country who see what Anna Collier has done here at USC and they're dying to come play for her and you can understand why she's fantastic. Yeah and she said yeah I can be selective now before it used to be just grabbing the best player I could and plugging them in so as you mentioned she's still changing things around seeing what she can find in terms of the best chemistry. Well she likes the blocker defender the traditional team that's what she likes and not every case is going to be like that for the most part she likes a, a, a blocker who goes up to the net all the time and a full-time defender. Take a look at this USC team. They're three-time defending national champions, back-to-back -back NCAA champions because 2016 was the first year for the NCAA championship. In addition to seeing their winning record, look how the number of opportunities they've had go up every year. And, and that's important. If you want to compete, uh, you need if, and play your best volleyball, you need to compete more often. And you see last year, 38 wins, but they had 39 man opportunities to play and compete and get better. Yeah, and they're 42 and 4 at home. They have not lost a duel here at Merle Norman Stadium since March of 2016. You couldn't pick two more heated rivalries for Anna Collier and USC. 42 and 4 here at Merle Normal Norman Stadium on the campus of USC. Kremer serving. Belton up. Into the net as May and Simo having trouble getting the rhythm. But USC earning that point because Belton retreated off the net, dug a ball, and put enough pressure on UCLA to score that point. Serving Simo. Kramer. Ooh, that was a wicked cut coming off her hand. It's windy, and I think the ball's moving a little bit, but Joe Kramer had the right idea. Ball's just dropping so fast, she can't get her hand on that ball. Simo serve to Kremer. Kremer is crafty. There's the left hand, by the way. You talked about it earlier. Oh, Savvy Simo, right-handed stab. Are you kidding me? Savvy Simo lays it out left side with her left hand, right side with her right hand. This is textbook. And then Joe Kremer with the over on one dig takes advantage of the fact that Savvy Simo just went from side to side covering the backcourt. That is nasty and I totally respect it. A great play. Belton Kramer, the experience on their side of the net, taking advantage of May and Simo in this win. Slow side switch, Dane Blanton coaching at USC. You see him talking. Dane Blanton's a bit of a steady Eddie also as a coach. He coached Clays and Hughes, the number one pair for USC for many years, including watching them have a lot of success as pros now. Dane Blanton, just even keel, the great motivator. He 
obviously some wonderful experience on the court that he can share, but super even keeled. He doesn't need to be a raw, raw guy, especially for a team like Belton and Kremer. Yeah, no, he's got an Olympic gold medal, also played indoor for Pepperdine. Four season as beach volleyball volunteer assistant coach for USC. No question about it, Dane Blanton will be leading a program someday on his own. Belton. Jenna Belton, patient, waiting for that opening. There you see Dane Bland, proud father. <laughs> yes. Four weeks ago, had a baby boy, and just loving the role that he's playing as dad. That's also a volunteer role, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Unbaid <laughs> as a parent. Savvy Simo, deep to Belton. What a crush. Belton and Kremer looking like they're an auto drive. Jenna Belton looks really aggressive, getting her feet to the ball. Good snap on the ball with her left arm. Nice consistency offensively, and UCLA struggling to control it. Simo down the middle. Jenna Belton there. She's like, what just happened? I was right there. Can't take your eye off the ball at any point. Simo serving. On to. How about that? Joe Kremer lifts that short serve and then Jenna Belton to the corner, coffin corner for the USC kill. Holly, when we talk about partnerships, you can really see how these two in particular have formed a true partnership. There's just a smoothness to the way that they play. Wow, Savvy Simo. She's a defensive specialist for the indoor team at UCLA, but she can get up and bring the heat offensively for UCLA. Mac May serving for the Bruins. Simo, again, this time Kremer there. Kremer, so good, just steady, controlling that ball, putting it up at the net for her partner, Jenna Belton. Belton on to consistently off of Kremer. But, you know, you think, oh, she's hitting it on two a lot. But that means the first contact has yeah. to be very well controlled. And that's what Joe Kremer does. No, that's what I'm saying exactly. And, and so you look at court one, the four pairs, Belton and Kremer leading on court number one. Let's take a look at court number two where the five pairs are playing here. It's Izzy Carey and Megan Murray who won their match against Pepperdine leading Kaiser and Paletto of USC. Paletto, new to USC this year, just finished her indoor responsibilities with Colorado State. And so we're going to step away as the first flight of action between these crosstown rivals, uh, UCLA and USC. You're watching, You're watching Pac-12 Los Angeles. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Welcome back to LA. Yeah, it's sunny, but it's a little brisk, about 60 degrees here at Merle Norman Stadium. Wind gusting at times. Court two, UCLA and USC underway. Murray and Carey leading Kaiser and Paletto in their first set. And Coach Anna Collier for USC looking for an answer at the fives pair. She's tried three or four different combinations in Izzy Carey and Megan Murray. Pretty solid at that spot for UCLA. Izzy Carey just so confident with her hands that time does not get there to deliver a clean hand set. Yep, and meanwhile she's trying some new things out, right? This is part of the influence of Jeff Alzina who is there trying some new sets and with the new play sets has come new confidence to try some different things according to head coach Stein Metzger, USCLA leading 1911. Well, I think when you're running play sets, you have to focus on better ball control because if you do not pass the ball well, you are not going to be able to run a play set. So it just, I think, puts more pressure and more focus on every contact. Ball's up. 
Well played as Izzy Carey puts it down off that freshman race set. Very nice. Izzy Carey so experienced, starting with an overhand dig after she retreats from the net and then slices and dices for UCLA. The Bruins junior freshman combination now at set point. What a run by Megan Murray. She read it, just clipped the top of the tape and kind of took a turn and she could not control it. Set point number two for Murray and Carey. Kaiser serve. Paletto, first season on the beach. And a net violation for USC will end the set. Murray and Carey win the first set. And so as set number one goes to UCLA, we return to the action on court number one. Belton and Kremer still in control. Yeah, Belton and Kremer just so steady against May and Simo, controlling this first set, 18-11. And UCLA is going to need to find a way to score off Belton and Kremer. This part of the year is all about figuring out your strengths. And for Stein Metzger, he seems to have found something on Carey and Murray. For Anna Collier, Belton and Kremer have been one of her standards throughout the, her seasons. I'll tell you, Joe Kremer is the most confident volleyball player right now. She is just feeling it. A nice forward hand set. She saw the opening, put enough pace, and set it cleanly over the net for the USC point. In fact, Belton and Kremer, when they were a five team last year, were the only and the first Pac-12 player of the week to be pair of the week to be awarded to a five team. That's how steady this team has been for SC. That time, Savvy Simo seen the open line shot pretty well executed, just about three inches long. Set point USC on court number one. Simo pass. Simo crushing. There you see what Savvy Simo can do. She and McMay, if they continue to play together, you know, they were scheduled. It was supposed to be Savvy Simo with Zana Muno, very experienced, athletic uh, beach volleyball player. But Zana Muno right now not healthy, and McMay stepping in. So it's going to be interesting to see the future if this team sticks together or if Zana Muno inserted back in the spot in the lineup. And with the deep ball falling, set number one, it goes to Belton and Kremer. So again, the four and fives split the first set. USC's fours take set number one. Welcome back to Merle Norman Stadium. First flight of action of the second duel of the day. Crosstown rivals at UCLA and USC. On court number one, pair four, Belton and Kremer. The steady Eddies took set one from May and Simo. But we're going to return our attention to court number two for the five pairs where Carey and Murray took set number one from the new team at Kaiser and Paletto. Paletto provides a lot of size. She's a grad student, six foot three from Toronto. Very physical. Played her indoor career at Colorado State. Nana Collier wants her to be part of the lineup with that size and that physicality. Just finding the right combination. Who can be that defender behind her? Another one to the deep corner. That is Kaiser. Maya Kaiser, you know, I look at her and I think she should be a blocker at six feet out of Texas, but she's the defender here. But who do you serve on a team with two girls six feet? They're going after Maya Kaiser. That time she hits the ball line and yeah. wide. And there's Gustavo Rocha in his first season as a USC uh, assistant coach. He is the yin to Anna Collier's yang, she says. She said he softens her edge. Definitely. Anna's so intense and... Uh, Gustavo's even killed. He makes things a little bit more fun. And, and you need that balance in a coaching staff. You can't have everybody be like Anna. Yeah, and by the way, that all comes from Anna. That's not us saying it. She says, it's nice to have him balance me out. Of course, Anna coached you as well. And she really sought out Gustavo for his expertise, but also because he is able to be 
a little bit different from her. Gustavo Hocha is from Brazil. He brings new drills, uh, a fresh new attitude. So USC really benefiting from having Gustavo as part of the coaching staff here at USC. USC approaching this match against Carey and Murray a little bit differently. We watched Pepperdine serve Murray the whole beginning of the match. USC first went to Carey. Well, you have to play to your strengths. And if you're Kaiser and Poletto, you want to play a power game. You've got size. You don't want to play a little finesse uh, shot games where you're having to run all over the court. You want to play power. So they're going after the bigger hitter, which is probably Izzy Carey in this situation for UCLA. Nice, nice control from Murray out of the net. Absolutely. She's patient, gets under that ball, and then the lefty Izzy Carey to the middle. Kaiser. That ball set too tight to the net for Maya Kaiser by Alexander Poletto. And Izzy Carey, she's not the biggest blocker on the net, but she's very efficient with her hands. One of the scariest things for fans, anyway, watching the game is when a coach has to split up a terrific pair like Martin and Wheeler for USC were split up last year for part of it. When you see Carrie and she's not with Zappia, who she had so much success with, it really tells you the depth of the team that the coach is able to do that. Yeah, sometimes splitting up a, a, a very good team and making two pretty good teams, it, it, you need that in a college program where you need five good pairs and the experience that Carrie brings to the freshman Megan Murray in that pair is really important and that's in Zappia playing with Maddie Yeomans you know you're creating more strong pairs and that's the goal of a college coach how about that a couple of big blocks by Carrie and then enough by Murray and it looked like she dug that with her left hand she went with the <laughs> correct hand and it paid off Megan Murray so long and, la and lanky. She knows the game well. The one thing I'd love to see her change, I'd love to see her shorten her approach. I think it'll give her more offensive range, especially when they're trying to run that quick offense. She'll be able to get on top of it or shoot the ball with her good hand. So how does having a shorter approach let you get on top of it? Well, if you're trying to run a four-step approach on a low set, it's hard to time it and get it at the height of your jump. It's hard to get the ball at the height of your jump with a four-step. A three-step shortens everything up and makes you more efficient with your footwork. Poletto passes Kaiser to the net and then Poletto with the over-pokey cross. And Poletto is not going to have a lot of time to work on her game. She's a grad student, played for Colorado State. The team made it to the regionals, played against Stanford earlier this year. She's just got this year at USC. Yeah, but for her size and physicality, Anna's trying to really get the most out of her and, and knows that at the five spot, with, with the right partner, she could really put a lot of pressure on other teams. Carey up against the much longer Paletto, just sees the court well. Well, if you're USC, the, uh, the other team has to go up and over Poletto. So as the defender, you need to read that and go get it. Maya Kaiser, not a true defender. She's kind of a player who could play up at the net or back. But if they had a true defender behind Poletto, I think they could be really tough to beat. Pick that up. Zach crossing out. Wow. Good scramble play. USC winning that long rally, but Izzy Carey trying to go hard cross court, just missing it wide after that one arm stab. Good aggressive swing going for it. Low outside. Ball's high, plenty of time, no blocker on, off the top of the net. I, I feel like if you're a defender, you need to be stopped to get that dribbler off the top of the net. You can't be leaning one way or the other. It kind of drops, I don't know, 10 feet back. Somebody's got to touch that ball if you're UCLA. Yeah, Kaiser's had six kills. Oh. 
Hand set, super low. You see, you see, like trying some new things. Yeah, yeah no, I, I like the concept. I, I like it, but I don't feel like you're maximizing Megan Ure's offense. I, I, as she gets more reps and feels more comfortable with it, great, but I don't think it's opening things up for her offensively yet. We're going to step away again as the heated action on court number two. It's a one-point differential with Muran Carey, Kaiser, and Paletto. Recruiter.com slash Pac-12. Welcome back. First flight of action in duel number two, court number one. Belton and Kremer took set one, but it's tied up in set two as May and Simo have found a groove. We'll return to the action in a moment, though, on court number two, where the five pairs are battling it out. Murray and Carey have already won three sets today. They took down Pepperdine in two sets for the first point of the duel. They're up by one in the second set. Ball in the air on court number two. And on the low set, a kill by Murray. Great pass by Murray. Pretty hand set, but you see Megan Murray cannot get on top of that ball. She can't get her feet all the way to the ball to get on top of that ball offensively. If they just lift that set for her a little bit more or shorten her approach a little bit, I think it will be better for UCLA. The four-step approach, an indoor approach typically? Yes. Megan Murray needs to push off and dig that ball, but well-placed little short cut shot to the middle by Maya Kaiser. Carry set, Murray high off hands. USC unable to run down that shot. This is a high line off the big block. Maya Kaiser trying to get a hand on that one. What a serve. How about that short serve by Megan Murray? Well placed. Maya Kaiser actually touches it. They just can't get under it and get it over the net for USC. UCLA's freshman junior pair now plus three in set number two. Plus four with that error. Izzy Carey just patrolling the net for UCLA, pushing her hands over anything tight. She's making an efficient block move for UCLA, and they go up 15-11 in the second set. Gustavo taking a timeout to talk with his team. Holly, you're a coach. You played in three Olympics. If you were coaching USC, what would you be telling Geyser and Paletto right now? Well, for one, move your feet. If, you, if they pass the ball, they have the physicality to go up and over the block and really dominate offensively, but they need to pass, and then they need to serve a little bit better to put more pressure on the team from UCLA. Yeah, and this USC team, one of the most successful teams in the history of beach volleyball, they're 4-0 and overall this season. But if you look at the big picture, they've won 104 of their last 107 duels. It's that note at the bottom, though, that really tells the story. Four of five pairs have new partners. When we talked to Anna Collier last week, she told us her pairs, completely different this week. Uh, a small injury and, and everything shifts. So uh, USC has some stuff to figure out, and once they get everybody healthy, it's going to be interesting. We might see things change, but... In the meantime, the players who are getting chances to compete are gaining valuable experiences. Yeah, and you also get an opportunity to show everybody, your coach, your partner, what you can do, who you can work with. A nice up using her left hand. Pulling off is Carrie. Murray. Doug. And the set was over. Carey pounced on it. Well, it, if you go back to the beginning of that rally, Alexander Paletta with her size, six foot three, Izzy Carey gets a good defensive touch and keeps the rally alive. And then that time, Carey just patrolling the net, getting that overset. Put down, but out. Alexandra Paletto, she's got the size for USC at the net and goes up and hammers it. Right mentality, just hit wide. 5-1 run for UCLA. 
And now the side switch. And the experience of Izzy Carey really keeping things calm for her freshman partner, Megan Murray. And if you're looking at the USC side of the net, these are basically two freshmen in terms of beach volleyball players in college. Paletto, a grad student, but this is her first year competing on the beach. And Maya Kaiser, a freshman. Lots of unforced offensive errors, and offense is what these two from USC should be doing best. Carry up and going right around her, it's Kaiser. That time, Paletto put up a beautiful apex set, and Maya Kaiser finds an opening down the line. Why is the apex of the set important to you? Well, when you see an apex as a hitter, it, you see it and you go get it. <laughs> It's important if you don't know where it's going or if it's pushed wide, it's hard to know where to get with your feet as a hitter. Seven point lead for Murray and Carey as they're looking to put the first point of the duel on the board. Carey sets Murray with a big block in front of her. And again, just finds that back corner. It is. Match point for UCLA's five pair. Nice balance from UCLA. Both players with double digit kills. For the match. And Izzy Carey and Megan Murray, a good day of work with a win over Pepperdine and a win over USC. It's funny, Izzy Carey ran back to serve that ball. She was focused. She didn't even know the set was over, let alone the match. First point of the duel on the board, UCLA leading USC 1-0 thanks to their five pair of Carey and Murray. And interesting for Carrie and Murray, who struggled in Hawaii this past weekend, kind of finding a rhythm today. Sometimes it only takes that one or two experiences together, but Stein Metzger, the head coach of UCLA, looking at his team, all smiles, a junior and freshman. Getting the first point in both duels today, both against Pepperdine and against USC. You can tell when Stein Metzger's feeling it, and he's feeling it today, given his team five, talking about what they did well, kind of a post-game wrap-up. Really gnarly blocking, the highest compliment you can get from Stein Metzger. Exactly, I like it. Let's go back to watch Dane Bland, another Olympian, an Olympic gold medalist, talking to Belton and Kremer, his stars for USC. The steady Eddies, if you will, leading set number two. And experience just really serving them well today. They're controlling the whole tempo of this match, and I think they're really taking advantage of May's inexperience. It's a little breezy. Um, this is, you know, one of her first top top collegiate challenges and she's got a very experienced team on the other side of the net Belton that one into Figueroa wow Belton putting some heat on that and I really don't know how that works I've drawn, driven on Figueroa a million times this is between the basketball complex the Galen Center and beach volleyball, and I have never had a volleyball land on my car. Because you're here usually. Yeah. <laughs> or there. But yeah, or yeah. there. That's Either true. way. Belton and Kremer controlling the second set. And this is what makes it such an exciting team sport. Belton and Kremer win this one, they'll just tie it back up. Kramer's digging everything for USC. Jenna Belton's got her track shoes running it down. A couple times Joe Kramer in transition going for that little short roll shot in area three, which is short middle on the court, but not dropping that last play. Down the line, what a serve ripped by Mac May. Laser beam, high point of contact, just flat right down the line. Beautiful serve by Mac May. Kramer. Coming, coming, coming. 
trying to turn that one, and it doesn't happen. Savvy Simo running that ball down, but Mac May, new to the game, does not like step around that ball and take a look and poke it somewhere where they're not. She bl blindly swings at it. A lot of converted indoor players on this court, of course, May and Simo currently on UCLA's indoor team. Kremer played indoor for Notre Dame before coming here. Savvy Simo attacking that middle ball with heat when she gets a chance. Watch this ball right down the middle. Jenna Belton does a good job sticking her arm out, trying to control that ball. Belton. Lefty going at Mac May. Just patrolling the net is Jenna Belton. Mac May needs to own the net at her size. She's new, so she's not comfortable like reaching over and going and getting balls. But that's something that she's going to do well in the future. Kremer served to Simo. Door closed by Jenna Belton, and it is match point for USC's four pair. I think one of the interesting things that Stein Metzger told us is when they asked everybody who they wanted to play with, everyone wanted to play with Savvy Simo. So that says a lot about her personality-wise and as a competitor. Can USC even the duel? Mac May. That time, patrolling the net. That time, she did a better job getting her feet there, making sure that ball did not clear the tape for the other team. Side switch as the sun goes down. UCLA only got back from Hawaii just two days ago. They only had one day to practice yesterday. Well, they flew home on the red eye Sunday night. Red eyes from Hawaii are killer. I don't know how you rebound. It takes me about a week. I and talked here to Sarah they are. Sponsel earlier, and she said they were freezing in practice yesterday. It has been uncharacteristically cold, and with the service error, Belton and Kremer take the point for USC. And so it's tied up 1-1 before our second flight of action. We didn't expect anything else in this crosstown rivalry. At Maui Gym, we're in Prudential. Bring your challenges. Welcome back, USC and UCLA tied up at one apiece after the first flight of action at Merle Norman Stadium. Hey everybody, Anne-Marie Anderson alongside Holly McPeak. This is opening day for Pac-12 Beach Volleyball. 34 matches on Pac-12's air this season. Nobody covering beach volleyball like the Pac-12 Network, and I'm excited to be a part of it. I love doing this. Yeah, and taking a look at this triple header today, three of the top five teams in the country. Let's take a look at this crosstown rivalry. USC and UCLA just finished their first flight of action. The fours and fives going at it. Of course, they split. That's how we ended up 1-1. One, one. So let's take a look at the fours. First, Simo and May had some trouble getting going against the steady eddies of USC. Steady Eddie is right. Jenna Belton and Joe Kramer were so solid. They used their experience, chipped away, and Savvy Simo, as athletic and experienced as she is, could only do so much. I think experience was the biggest factor in that matchup. Belton and Kremer became the first five pair to ever win a Pac-12 pair of the week last year when they were fives. They've moved up. Meanwhile, for Simo and May, there's a big upside there for this pair. They haven't had a lot of experience together. Oh, yeah. Mac May just joined the beach team, and she is getting her reps. All the other girls had reps all fall long and grew up playing the sport. So Mac May has a lot of upside. When she learns the little small things in the game, she is going to improve rapidly. Well, let's take a look at the five pairs. That one one, on the other hand, was won by Murray and Carey of UCLA. Megan Murray, so experienced. She's grown up on the beach. I remember seeing her as a little freshman. She was a tiny, skinny little thing, but the way she moved around the court, you know, I said she got that with her left hand. She didn't. She got it with her right hand, but right, it was still a time. good dig. <laughs> 
But I think Megan Murray has a lot of upside too. As long as she, she's played a long time, she understands the game. But I think playing with Izzy all season long is going to help her really elevate her game. You see pretty much domination at the five pair by Murray and Carey. And then the same thing, but in USC's favor at pair four. Yeah, Kaiser and Paletto in the five pairs for USC is something new that Anna Collier has been trying. Collier is looking for the right five pair for this program. Anna has a lot of talent and big talent and she's just looking for the right combination. You only have Alexandra Paletto for one year. You really want to maximize her, maximize her six foot three length at the net if you can. Now coming up next is the first flight or we'll call it the second flight of action with the one, two and three pairs at the ones for UCLA or the McNamara is the identical twins who dominated Pepperdine. Yeah, you know, it's going to be a really fun matchup because the McNamara's are both 5'9" and they're playing Therese Cannon, who at 6'3", provides a lot of length at the net. She's probably closer to 6'2". And Abril Bustamante playing defense behind her. Her first year at ones for um, Abril Bustamante. So it's going to be a fun matchup. You're going to have the size at the net for USC and the superior ball control for UCLA. And meanwhile, at the twos, it's going to be thrilling because Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel, who were terrific the first time around, are going to be facing a USC in a pair that just just moved into the seconds. Yeah, Joey Dennis, who's a fantastic athlete, Brianna Sizemore, will be new at twos, and they face up better against two big hitters. So it's going to be interesting to see how they match up. Yep, and we'll tell you all about everybody. Zappia Yeomans and Holly Ren and Slater will be the third teams. When we come back, we'll take you through the one, two, and three pair second flight of action. It's all tied up in these crosstown rivals, USC and UCLA. More action coming up on the other side of this break. There are two ways to... 1954. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Beautiful late winter day in Los Angeles, UCLA and USC Crosstown Rivals. Opening things up on Pac-12 Network today. Opening day of action. Triple header. And we're about to see the second flight the McNamara Twins for USC against Bustamante and Cannon. Or of UCLA versus USC's Bustamante and Cannon. Well, we talked about it earlier when we talked to Anna Collier. She had a lineup prepared, one player out with a lineup, and everybody shifted up. So they've only been together since last weekend, basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and just a couple days till today. So they're new together, but they're already the Pac-12 pair of the week. Abril Bustamante out of Redondo Beach, she's a junior, and Therese Cannon out of New York, a senior, who brings some big size and power at the net. Yeah, very exciting for USC to have that kind of depth, to be able to move things around, even though it isn't fun, they're able to do it. You mentioned that they lost five key seniors. And so for Anna Collier to find depth within her program is really important. Of course, Sarah Hughes and Kelly Clays, I don't know that any pair will dominate beach volley, collegiate beach volleyball again the way that those two did. Here's the five seniors that they let, they lost. Well, all of them have gone on to play at the next level professionally. Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes competing in an FIVB event this weekend in Fort Lauderdale. Allie Wheeler at grad school, but she's been playing on the AVP tour. Sophie Bukovec competing on the FIVB tour, and then of course Sarah Hughes, who partners with Kelly Clays. Yeah, who partners with Kelly Clays and won ADP events last year, FIVB events. And it's really something for this, the growth of this sport because Clays and Hughes so dominated this sport. But I really don't think, Holly, that that will be able to happen. I mean, it, they were, won 100 straight matches. Yeah. I, I, you know, with the depth and the parity across the country, I don't see that happening again. No, 103, actually, when you really look at it. And that's a great thing for Beach Volleyball. Of course, they'll always remember winning 103. But, well, the action now you shows you the depth here as we look at the top three pairings for these two teams. As usual, on court two, Sponsel and Justine, Dennis and Sizemore. On court three, Yeomans and Zappia, Hallgren and Slater. But we're going to start our attention on court one with the one pairs. The McNamara's versus Bustamante and Cannon. 
A bit of Bustamante at the service line. Service there to start things off now. UCLA with a 1-0 lead and the serve. You mentioned it earlier, the height advantage certainly goes to USC, but in the beach game, it isn't necessarily all about length. No, it's about ball control, strategy, who maximizes opportunities. The McNamara's discovered beach volleyball while on vacation in Mexico, completely fell in love with it. And as junior players were playing internationally before they ever went to college. Nice lift, that's Megan McNamara. She's the right-hander, number 31. What power from Bustamante. Abril Bustamante, you saw her indoor. She was a, a middle blocker. She can either defend or block, but Ana Collier really likes her as a defender because she can get up and bang after she digs a ball. Megan McNamara, just beautiful control. Excuse me, that was, yeah, that was Megan. No, that was Nicole. That was Nicole. <laughs> Identicals with mirror numbers. They also put on long jerseys when the, when it's warm out, and it is definitely not. Last year, Nicole would tape her shoulder, kind of indicating to many fans which one was the left-hander. And so eventually they caught on that, and they both taped their left shoulder. Well-placed high poke shot down the line by Abril Bustamante, also known as April Bustamante. If people think I'm saying it's funny, it's A-B-R-I-L. Mom from Spain, dad from Argentina. She is fluent in both languages, English and Spanish. And Nicole McNamara gets the cut shot to drop. Nicole McNamara, deadly cut shot. She's a lefty. We saw it in the first duel as well. And a lefty with a great cut shot is tough. You have to get this McNamara team who's undersized out of position and that's not easy to do. A little shank in the pass, a little tweak in the set and then you can capitalize with your defense but it's not easy to do. Simply because they make every touch count. Stein Metzger has talked about their work ethic and how they have been elevated at UCLA in the last three years once they joined this program. McNamara is going after Bustamante to start off this match. Nicole straight down the middle. Beautiful by Bustamante. Bustamante doesn't just have finesse. She's got power. She can hit from the right or left size. In the experience, she grew up on the beach plane, has a nice all-around game. These are two veteran teams when we're talking about lots of reconfiguration. Bustamante, a junior, Cannon, a senior. Hands. Don't see a lot of hands setting from USC, but UCLA, supreme confidence. How about that? Just the scramble play and Nicole McNamara going down the line. April Bustamante digs it and then you just can't control it on the other side to get a second contact. Power off the net. Here comes Nicole with her left hand coming in and a double contact called on USC. Right now, ball control heavily in favor of UCLA, at least the way they are playing. They are maximizing each touch, taking care of the ball and ending rallies. UCLA's Stein Metzger has always said, ball control trumps all. That's the number one thing that he preaches to his team, and there is no better ball control team than the McNamara's. Down the line as court one. A two-point lead for UCLA. The other courts, of course, continuing action as well. Sponsel and Justine with a three-point lead over USC's Dennis and Sizemore. On court number three, Yeomans and Zappia with a two-point lead against Hallgren and Slater. One one coming into this flight of action. The four and five pair split, much like we saw in the Pepperdine UCLA match as well. The duel. It really adds more pressure to the second flight when you come in at 1-1. Sense of urgency, taking care of the match on your court. Uh, UCLA 
won that duel against Pepperdine at the 3-1 mark. They went on to a 3-2 finish against Pepperdine. Therese Cannon last year playing with Nicolette Martin had a fantastic season for USC. Really found her potential. Bombing her jump serve and really tough to stop defensively. Yeah, and as you build on that, and talking about Cannon, the year before in 2016, Anna Collier told us that Cannon felt like she should be in the lineup that year, but wasn't consistent enough. And she worked so hard, she went from USC's six pairs to the three. And Anna Collier really liked the way that Cannon went after it, took the criticism, took the critique, and worked with it. And if you want to learn and you want to be the best, you need to do that. And I think with Nicolette Martin on her side, really coaching her, getting her going, giving her lots of confidence, telling her to stay aggressive, it really helped her evolve as a player. Yeah, and the setting was really a point of focus for Anna Collier, saying that Cannon's setting really needed to improve. It did, especially in transition. Here is another opportunity for Cannon to show it. High line by Megan McNamara. Bustamante and Cannon, they need to put away transition balls. You can't give the McNamaras a second chance. You dig a ball, you get a good set to the net and terminate. That's how you need to win this match. Bustamante up with Nicole in front of her. Decisive put down by Bustamante. You see that aggressive approach using her size advantage and bringing the power from the right side of it. Bustamante, perfect pass, and then Cannon pushes her up to the net. Sharp angle with power for USC. Little pokey, Megan just puts it away. McNamara is so good at ball control, moving the ball around the court. Shadows have now come across most of the court, really only in the entire stadium, one half of one court still showing sun. Bustamante up. Off the block. Good aggressive swing. When you're aggressive like that, good things happen. She made high enough contact that the block could not control it back into the court. Well, you've talked about that, right? The, the length of the McNamara is at only five foot nine. It's one thing that they haven't been able to control. Setting just perfect, turning down the line, and it's just a little wide. Well, I like that late jump into the angle by USC. One point lead by USC on court number one. Home of the USC Trojan. Good at life, New York life. Second flight of action between USC and UCLA underway on court two. UCLA leading USC in set number one on court three. USC with the slight advantage. The duel is tied up at one apiece. We return to the action on court number one with the top pairs for both of these programs, and it is close. In other words, as you look at all that, it couldn't be any closer. No, and, and that's what makes it so exciting, this format. Best three of five. Therese Cannon serving for USC. Court number one has three juniors and a senior on it. Some of the most veterans, hands pulled out. Just perfection. Beautiful, hard approach by Megan McNamara and then perfectly executed. High line shot, good hand contact. Look at the spin on that ball, keeping it in the court for UCLA. Power cross court to Bustamante. Jumping into the cross was Nicole. Nicole and Megan, they're undersized. They need to take little risks like that to make digs. That time jumping into the angle, but Abdul Bustamante, very experienced, sees that and takes advantage. Replay as a ball came onto the court. So the point is completely replayed. Bustamante back, back to serve again. Power. Megan passes. Nicole, perfect hands. A very rare hitting error by the McNamara's. Hit long, and USC up by two in this first set. 
They serve Nicole this time, back set. And that one does hit the back line. Holly, I know that you're one of the best setters in the world and have been. Is you look at Nicole McNamara pull out her hands time and time again. Does that impress you or strike you in any way? I, I love watching it. it. Like I said, it's not easy. You really need to focus on good footwork and getting in a good position to touch the ball in a nice soft way. So it's a lot of work and it's a lot of confidence and I love seeing that from these young players. A couple of great plays by the McNamara's. First of all, hitting the back line. Then Megan McNamara closes the door on Bustamante. Nicole Sir back at Bustamante. Wow. A bit of Bustamante threading the needle down the line. Really nice swing there. This is way inside of the court, but the hand contact from Bustamante taking that away from the defender towards the line. Cannon pulls that up. Megan setting the left-hander, Nicole. She owns every spot on this court. And how about the pace on that ball? You need it. If you hit that slow, you the defender can run it down. But Nicole puts enough pace on this ball that Abdul Bustamante on the run cannot get there. Let's go, Haley. Megan McNamara back to serve. They have been serving Bustamante as of late. This one right between the two. Bustamante passes it. Oh, she turns it away. Nice offensive range. Therese Cannon putting up a really nice hittable set. Meanwhile, let's pop in into court number two. 17 to 10. Now 18 to 10 on the side switch. Lily Justine has been dominating the court. Brianna Sizemore and Joy Dennis, they played at threes and now are at twos for USC. They match up better against a team that likes to hammer because they're both big. They don't want to play that little shot game, but Sarah Sponsel and really Justine have enough experience, especially with Sarah Sponsel, to be able to take advantage of that. Sarah Sponsel serves. What a swing by <laughs> Lily Justine. Almost took Sizemore's head off. Good flat, deep hit. Sarah Sponsel said by the end of yesterday's practice she could not feel her hands. Of course, from Arizona, I lived here. And tried to catch that one. How about that touch from Sarah Sponsel flying out of the backcourt, but both she and Justine going for that same short ball and then nobody up to get the second one. Joy Dennis serving. Dennis and Sizemore, a big hole to dig out of. Look at the pause of Sarah Sponsel. So much confidence. She doesn't even have to face, but it comes out really nice. You teach setters to get to the ball and try and face your target. Set point for Sponsel and Justine. Served Joy Dennis. Picked up. Sponsel, a terrific crafty hitter, puts it away, and a UCLA takes set number one in the two pairs. Let's pop over to court number three, where UCLA is also in control, Zappia and Yeomans. And now it's tied up at 19 apiece, and then USC goes ahead. Sammy Slater and Haley Hallgren spent the entire summer last summer competing on the beach and all the junior events together and ended up winning i believe it was the junior olympics on the beach so they have a nice chemistry together zapia and here comes slater popping it over the return is wide and a usc takes the first set off of Zappia and Yeomans. Anna Collier coaching Hallgren and Slater. That's a good win for the two freshmen right now. UCLA at three need to figure out how to capitalize on opportunities. The action ending quickly around these courts and so while Slater and Hallgren take set number one, it is set point on court number one. 
Ball is wide, and the McNamara's take set number one over Bustamante and Cannon. So the ones and twos for UCLA pick up the first set. USC's threes pick up the first set. Action fast and furious. It's tied up at one apiece in this crosstown rivalry duel. When we put up. Crosstown rivalry opening day of Pac-12's coverage of the beach volleyball, USC and UCLA squared up at one apiece in this second duel of our triple header. Three courts of action going on concurrently in the second flight here. Court one, the McNamara's took the first set over Bustamante and Cannon. On court two, Justine and Sponsel with a first set win over Dennis and Sizemore, but we're going to turn our attention to court number three. We're the only true freshman team we have seen today. Haley Hallgren and Sammy Slater face the senior and sophomore Zappia and Yeomans of UCLA. Holly, only true freshman we've seen, but you mentioned they have a lot of experience not only playing, but playing together. And they dominated the U18 or under 18 uh, competition on the beach this summer, played together knowing that they had a good chance to play together and come in and contribute to USC right away. So they have nice chemistry, very comfortable playing with one another. And they're both big enough where they can split. Haley Holgren from Texas will serve the ball and Sammy Slater at the net. An ace serve from Holgren. Haley Holgren's little sister also planning on coming to compete here at USC. Big Texas contingency liking to come to USC and compete. Yeah, they again, beach volleyball spreading so much. They have their first player from Hawaii this season as well. USC has been kind of spreading their wings a little bit. Perry Green, we'll see him sure at some point throughout her career. She's a competitive surfer. First Hawaii player to come to USC. Hallgren and Slater have delivered on a Collier. All smiles. Anna Collier really enjoying these two young freshmen. Haley Hogan asked some really good questions. She's learning. She's a lot stronger. Haley's mom said she needed a whole new wardrobe when she came home because she has some newfound muscles. Zapia passes. Good, fast attack by Elise Zapia going at the dropping defender. It's pretty remarkable to come in as true freshman, not only just even be able to make the court, which most don't, but to be in the three pairs. Tried to turn it a little too much, never over. That ball set a little bit tight. Maddie Yeomans cutting off the angles. Thirty-four duels on Pac-12 networks this year. Nobody else covers beach volleyball the way Pac-12 does. Some of the best programs in the country in the Pac-12 conference, including today, seeing two teams in the top five from the Pac-12. Back-to-back hitting airs for Haley Hallgren. That ball set tight to the net. Matty Yeomans blocking the line. But Haley Hallgren trying to sneak it by the blocker instead of going around or over. Anna Collier mentoring this young freshman team on court three. Again, just a little shot where they're not from Hallgren. Well, it's interesting. If you're UCLA, the other play worked with Yeomans blocking the line. Zapia on the angle. They decided to mix it up and kind of open the door for Haley to find some open court. Little poke. Looking for the corner, putting it someplace different. Well, you just see the smart, the I guess the volleyball IQ from a freshman like Haley. She sees Maddie Yeomans get off the net, 
and just goes deep over her. That's good court vision, nice experience in volleyball IQ from her. Yeah, meanwhile, if you're Yeomans, what's the key to dropping more successfully? Well, you need to drop and get your hips turned around so you can react to whatever she's going to do. If she goes over your head, at least you can turn and sprint. Yeah, she was kind of caught a little bit in no man's land there, but she comes back with a block. Ana talking to her team, keeping them focused on what they need to do. Sometimes freshmen don't uh, make in-match adjustments like they should because of lack of experience, but I feel like these two are pretty experienced. She's just kind of keeping them on course and focused. Yeah, Anna Collier, we asked her what her priorities were with this team after graduating five seniors, and she said concept number one is really understanding the culture that she wants to build. She took this team on a retreat up to Malibu, worked with a lot of sports psychologists, talked about part of leadership is being able to follow as well. And so working with these freshmen who she can anticipate are going to be leaders someday in her program. Deep ball is out. Slater and Hallgren. Holding themselves well against some more veteran Zapia and Yeomans. Yeah, I feel like Manny Yeomans and Elise Zapia need to minimize their errors and play within their own game. Like, maximize what they do and do it well. That was a nice side out play. Manny Yeomans staying aggressive. Good looking side out for UCLA. Balls up. Slater, long. Sammy Slater is playing on the right side. She's a lefty, but she comes really straight in. In my mind, that kind of limits her offense. If she can, like, angle her approach a little bit more, I think it will allow her to attack into that angle better. There's another opportunity for her, but the set is not successful, and it ends up being a trouble play. That's a play UCLA needs to capitalize on, but for USC, it's a break. Little short ball, Maddie Yeomans needs to go up and be aggressive, and she reverse pokies under her side of the net instead of finishing the play. Go to the deep corner. Reverse pokey. Did you just make that up? I've never heard an yeah. actual name for it. Well, having it go back. Yeah, it, yeah. it's <laughs> something you don't want to yeah, happen. Exactly. <laughs> you have to get behind the ball and direct it where you want. If you get underneath it and get that backspin, it's going to come backwards and not something you want to see on your side of the net. No, reverse on your side of the net is a bad thing. We're going to step away as Slater Hallgren, Zappia, and Yeoman's trade blows back and forth. This duel is tied up at one apiece. There are two winners day. Welcome back to Beach Volleyball and Pac-12 and Network's Crosstown Rivalry in the second duel of a triple header today. UCLA and USC tied up at one apiece. As three courts of action are going on, let's go on all over to court number two. Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel of UCLA won set number one handily, but Dennis and Sizemore have responded, and it's tied up. Joy Dennis, one of the most physically talented players in the USC volleyball program. She can dominate physically. It's just finding the right matchup, the right partner to push her in the right way. What a pretty set by Sponsel. And for USC, they're trying to figure out who to score off. Do you go off Lily? Do you try and go at Sarah, who moves the ball well around the court? Certain Joy Dennis there, and door is closed by Lily Justine. Boy, that feels good when you jump in big to somebody's angle and they give it to you. And Lily Justine, look, she crouches and then shuts it down. Wow, beautiful block by Lily Justine. They keep the serve on Joy Dennis. Little. Here's Sponsel. Ball comes back at her. What an up by Lily Justine. And now Sponsel is stuck blocking. Sarah Sponsel can block. She just hesitated to jump, and Joy Dennis annihilates that cross court. What a cover by Lily Justine. Sarah Sponsel's feet got under her, and she could not jump. 
tied up at 14 apiece. This is important for Dennis and Sizemore to find the ability to answer back because they were spanked pretty hard in set number one, 21 to 11. And they really struggled for USC uh, when they were out in the desert, could not get a rhythm going as a team and get some victories, although they had one good win over the weekend. Dennis having to do the majority of the passing since we joined them in the set number two, and she can put it away. Brianna Sizemore, a junior. She's new to the game, but vocal, fiery, good energy. She puts up a pretty good set on that tight pass. Dennis playing with some urgency and some fire. Sponsel puts it away at Sizemore. Nice, quick, kind of a shovel set to Sponsel, who gets on it quick for UCLA. Dennis, little long point, UCLA. They're up now by two. Teams like to challenge Joy Dennis. Yes, she's physical. She likes to hit the ball straight down. She'll probably make the highlight reel, but she also usually give you a few errors as well. Lily Justine pops that first one up and Sizemore decides to try to attack it. Well, I, I like the aggressive thought in her mind, but she was too early and did not execute that play for USC. So USC going to sit down as it's a three-point lead for UCLA. If UCLA is able to win this set, they win the match, they win the match, they win a point and put the Bruins up 2-1. And it's all coming down one set at a time. Right there you see Gustavo Hocha getting his team focused on what they need to do on court two. Now let's go over to court three where UCLA a one-point lead. Zapia and Yeomans against the true freshman team for USC. Elise yeah, Zapia needs to stay on her feet, keep moving. She's taken a step and fallen down. If she can stay on her feet and run those balls down, I think that can be a, a difference maker for UCLA. Hallgren and Slater took set number one over Zapia and Yeomans. It was a close set. That ball hit wide by Maddie Yeoman. She came in confident in that shot, just did not execute it the way she wanted to. Yeomans. Elise Appia tells Maddie Yeoman she wants to switch sides, but instead they call a timeout. So Slater and Hallgren leading by two, but we'll go back to court number two where Joy Dennis is up to attack. And she does. See what I mean? It's like a highlight reel or it's out. So I think UCLA kind of trying to figure out what's going to happen more often. But impressive hit by Joy Dennis, one of the most physically talented players on the beach. Justine and Sponsel trying to win this set, get another point for UCLA in this duel. Dennis, back to serve, and then realizes they're out of rotation, and so Sizemore serving for USC. Sponsel. And now you've had an opportunity to see some of the setting from Lily Justine. What are your impressions? I like it. When the ball's in front of her and she gets her platform, gives it a nice apex, and Sarah Sponsel moving the ball around the court really well. You know, you can tell me when somebody's setting you and you're a great setter and they're not a very good setter, is that frustrating? <laughs> you can tell me. I won't well, tell anybody. I mean, obviously, <laughs> ideally, when you play the sport of beach volleyball, you want a partner who can set the ball well. That's yeah. important, especially if you're running around digging the ball. If you get a nice set, you're rewarded for your dig and your hustle. If you get a lousy set, you're like, why did I just crush myself yeah, to get exactly. that ball? And when somebody can set like Sarah Sponsel or like you, oh, oh touch the net. She wanted well, to eat it up so bad. She wanted to annihilate that. <laughs> Good aggressive air. Well, USC in the driver's seat on the right side of your screen. 
18-17, the true freshmen Slater and Hallgren. On the left side, Justine and Sponsel steamrolling their way, and as Sponsel puts that away, left side of your screen is match point. You see Sarah Sponsel. This is something that young players should watch. Hit it, if you're gonna hit it at the retreating blocker, hit it hard so they can't control it. It bounces off them, like pings off it. Don't hit it off speed right at them. Foot fault by Sarah Sponsel on that last serve. That's a break for USC, but still match point for UCLA. Left side of your screen, match point. They serve, Sponsel. Off Dennis. Broken play, and of course Sponsel puts it away. Justine and Sponsel in straight sets over Dennis and Sizemore. Quickly, look at the right side of your screen. It is match point for USC, Slater and Hallgren. So right now, UCLA leading this duel 2-1. But Slater and Hallgren with the next point have an opportunity to tie it up at 2-2 and put all the pressure on court number one. And, and how that does it. How bad an ace from Sammy Slater to score that second point. This is what makes this team concept so exciting. Just like that, it's 2-2. Two, two. And all the pressure comes back to court number one, the McNamara's. One set number one. And they are leading 18-14 in set number two. Everybody rushing over to court number one now where Bustamante and Cannon and the McNamara's know something special is happening. I'll tell you, when everything's on the line, if you're Stein Metzger, you want it to be on the McNamara's. Yeah, that's a, absolutely they right. They do not take a play off, and boy, are they intense. The McNamara's have been the one pair for UCLA since they came in as freshmen, winning in Portugal internationally on their 17th birthday. You know what I'm impressed? They, they're from Canada. Yes, they fell in love with the sport on vacation, but to get the proper coaching and to be as technically sound as they are, that's what's really impressive. I know uh, Kira Iannone, who is now the head coach at University Alabama Birmingham uh, for beach volleyball, coached them and, and, and in Canada as juniors. So she deserves a lot of credit for guiding them and working on their footwork because they are so technically sound. It's not easy in the sport of beach volleyball to get that level of coaching at an early age. Yeah, Iannone, before she went to UAB, was an assistant for Steve Walker at Arizona Arizona, where she coached another set of identical twins and the Witt sisters. And you know what's funny about that? I asked her, how many twins have you coached? She said she coached two set of boy twins in Canada as well. So it, it's a very common thing in the sport of beach volleyball for some reason. I guess you've got a built-in partner. And meanwhile, for Bustamante and Cannon, this is a team that doesn't have much experience. They're being tested here, much experience together as it compared to the McNamara's. But they're two great players. Therese Cannon, a really good blocker. Abdel Bustamante, a solid defender who can win at any level. I think the next level, both players can be pros. Bustamante passes. And what a nice shot by Bustamante, finds that line. Perfect, perfectly placed, going over the line block with some pace. And here's what you really need for Bustamante and Cannon. You can't let the McNamara's get another point, ideally, because then it is match point and dual point. Got to fight it off one at a time. Easier said than done. Lefty, Nicole, beautifully dug by Cannon. Bustamante puts it up, it's inside, they're on the run. Hammer wide. Megan McNamara going for it, getting her feet to that ball to hit that sharp angle, just missing it wide. I love the way the McNamaras look at each other and just push each other. Hey, next play, right back. Really positive, and that's so important when your partner believes in you. Bustamante serve. Back to Nicole McNamara. Cannon blocks. Here's the opportunity for SC. Little shot. Got two crafty McNamara's against the power of SC. Two 
two players, one for UCLA, one for SC, being too tentative. You need to terminate at this point in the match. If you're UCLA, you do not want USC gaining any momentum at this point in the match. And if you're, you're USC, you need to do all it takes to score points. UCLA, as you look at that all-time record versus USC, that one really was a big one. It was in the semifinals of the Pac-12 tournament last year. Yeah, it was exciting. It was. It was a 3-2 win, and then meanwhile, USC answered back in the finals with another 3-2 win. This is the second duel of the day. Taking a look at USC's history, they have only lost to five programs total ever. Pepperdine, who has handed them the most losses, is their opponent in the next duel and our final duel of the day. Long Beach State at five, Florida State and Hawaii. Both of those programs are really strong this year. In my mind, two of the best in the country. And UCLA handed them that loss at the Pac-12 championships last year in Tucson. Nina Matthews, the head coach of Pepperdine, on a call here, the head coach of USC. Go way back in this rivalry, back to the days of probably, was it Marine Street playing? Oh, yeah. yeah competitive <laughs> group. Yeah, it's a very competitive group. And so for Nina Matthews, it's her last time here at Merle Norman Stadium. Pepperdine has handed USC the most losses of any program in the country. But right now, all the pressure and attention is on this crosstown rivalry, on this court number one, tied up 2-2 two -two in this duel. Nicole McNamara shut down by Cannon. Three huge points by USC. What a block, what a cover, but USC consecutive points with a lot of pressure on the line. Look at the face of Cannon. No emotion. Each team has 12 kills apiece. Crafty wins that one, and it is now match point UCLA. Stein Metzger feeding the service ball to Nicole McNamara. For the duel. Megan passes. Megan McNamara back to the corner. UCLA wins the duel over USC. Our State Farm get to a better state play of the game. What a play, starting with an aggressive serve. The McNamara set their defense up and capitalize on the opportunity going deep to the corner. Impressive performance by those two McNamaras. UCLA wins the duel over their crosstown rivals. Second time ever that the Bruins have beat the Trojans. The first time the Trojans have lost here at home since 2016. Our State Farm get to a better state. Play of the game, the final point. Looking at the final point again, the McNamaras get this opportunity and Megan McNamara to the corner. Bustamante can touch it, but not control it. Sealing the duel for UCLA. Big smiles up by the McNamara's. It all came down to them. And they wanted it. It's a big win for UCLA. Second program win ever. As a UCLA beat USC, but coming up next, Maybe the hottest rivalry in beach volleyball, Pepperdine versus USC. For my partner, Holly McPeak, our director, Gary Milkis, and our producer, Billy Chusett. I'm Anne Marie Anderson. Take a quick break, and we'll meet you back here. Pep versus SC next. We now join this program.